friends upsc mains exam is two weeks away and internal security plays a very important role in gs3 in gs3 nearly 50 mocks questions worth 50 mocks come from internal security already i have taken a six hour session on internal security wherein i explained all the topics given in upsc syllabus for internal security so anybody who has not covered internal security in detail can go through my video you can just type in the youtube internal security by sarat chandra and see six hours video in those six hours also if some topics you already know very well skip those topics those topics which you think you haven't covered very well please go through them and in the last two weeks before the mains exam i suggest all of you to write one set of full exam that means one essay gs1234 and two optional papers you have to write paper one paper two even at Sarat Chandra Ice Academy also, offline in Hyderabad, as well as online, we are conducting one full length UPSC mains mock exam for free from September 2nd to 6th. September 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th and 6th. September 2nd will be only essay paper. September 3rd will be GS1 and 2, morning and afternoon sessions. Then GS3 and 4, then a day break and then you have this uh, 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 optional paper anthropology, sociology, geography, political science, public administration, film literature, psychology. These seven options we're providing. Anybody who wants to practice mock exams can write it for free, either offline or online, and will be evaluated within three to four days of the of the mock exam that you write. Now friends, today, today's session is analysis of previous year's questions on internal security. The reason being, in the last two weeks before the mains exam, definitely you cannot revise all topics of every subject. For example, take polity, economy, history. You have to revise only those important topics which you think may come in this year's exam or which you think are factual based, which you may forget. Similarly, coming to internal security, though you cannot revise entire internal security in the next two weeks, we are providing here few possible areas from which you may, give, you may get questions. And these predicted, expected or possible questions of internal security in this year's GS3 is based on our analysis of previous papers and last 15 to 16 months of current affairs. So friends, first we will analyze how previous questions have come. Based on that, you can have an idea of what kind of questions you may expect this year. Also, as I told you, the six hour video where I explain internal security, the link, the link of that internal security class is provided in the description. Please see the description and watch that video. Friends, now let us analyze the previous year's internal security questions right from 2013 to 21. So I have divided the GS3 internal security syllabus given in UPSC notification. I divided it point by point and each point we will see how many questions have come and what questions have come. For example, the first part of the syllabus is development versus extremism. That means how extremism affects development in area and also how underdevelopment in a region leads to extremism. So in 2015, there was a direct question in this area that is about the development of industries in area, how it is affected by the left wing extremism, particularly Naxalism. Then the next topic of UPS syllabus, for example, various challenges to security caused by, for example, one of them, the challenge of security caused by the state and non-state actors. State in the sense it can be Pakistan, China, etc. And non-state actors can be any organization, terrorist organization, ISIS, etc. So, as you can see, a lot of questions came from this area which shows that UPSC specifically wants to test the candidates on their knowledge on, you know, terrorism, left-wing extremism, Northeast India insurgency, particular organizations and the role of state and non-state actors in internal security. For example, China, Pakistan economic quarter question have come twice in 14 as well as 18. And you know how multi-ethnic society multi-religious society of India is leading to radicalism and regarding ISIS. Terrorism particularly questions have come almost four to five times in different years questions have come. So these are the questions as you can see on terrorism, left-wing extremism, 
and recent questions have gained depth. Any topic in UPSC, first time when they ask you, they may ask you at the basic level. But when they repeatedly ask questions on the same topic, they go in depth. For example, terrorism, in the initial 2013-14, the questions were very basic, <coughs> directed from the syllabus of UPSC. But now they have gone into the depth. They ask questions like, on the ground workers, how they are helping terrorist organizations and even cross border, on either side of the border, the local people, how they are helping terrorists, these kind of questions are coming. Now coming to the communication networks, media, social media and the networking sites, the questions, only one question has come, that is about how internet and social media was misused by non-state actors and how India can check that. So as only one question has come from this area, we are expecting a question this year and I will show you the question after the analysis is over I will show you the possible nine questions that we are expecting also as only one question has come on the development versus extremism we are expecting a question on you know how extremism comes in areas where there is a lack of social development political development economic development we, we uh, are predicting a question from that area too coming to the maritime security friends only in 2014, there was a question of maritime security, high risk area, previously it was 65 degrees longitude, now it is shifting towards 78 degrees near to the west coast of India, around the Arabian Sea, that was the question. As question came long back and as in this year's current affairs also, in the March, in the month of March, the Milan excess happened, you know, in the Vishakhapatnam coast with the Eastern Naval Command where navies of several countries have done a joint exercise. So based on that current affairs aspect, as well as the question came long time ago, we are expecting a question in the maritime security, particularly focused on the Indo-Pacific region. I will show you the question too. Now airspace, coming to the airspace, again the same logic applies here. In 2014, a question came on the airspace security. So this is a long gap of almost 7-8 years. So again this year we are expecting a question on airspace security and the reason being in the Republic Day as well as Independence Day celebrations in New Delhi where all the high profile people have gathered in order to provide security to them particularly airspace security DRDO has used the G4 counter drone system hence there is a possible question on the airspace security this year too. Now coming to the loss and other challenges from generally loss or acts or even the bills that were not yet passed but still in the parliament but that are debated in the news also comes in the examination for example previously AFSPA though the act was 1958 act it has met some amendments also discussions happened in the news in those years hence questions came on AFSPA even the question came on the UAPA act of 1967 even NIA act and this year also on the NIA act certain amendments suggested. So we are expecting that question too this year. Then friends, then you know cyber security. Cyber security. On cyber security, there were questions in the last two years consecutively. So if at all a question has to come, it will come in depth. There won't be any basic question on cyber security according to us. Similarly, money laundering. Recently, a Supreme Court judgment is based on amendment to the Money Laundering and Binami Act. Hence, we are expecting a question also. Last, though question came last year, again, you know, question may come this year based on the Supreme Court judgment. Similarly, border area security, it can be Myanmar, Pakistan, China, whatever. Based on, you can observe the previous questions, almost five previous questions have come. And this year, we are expecting the question on the Pakistan border because recently in the news, in the news debates and newspapers, news channels, LOC, cross LOC trade from India to Pakistan has been debated. Cross LOC trade, which was stopped between India and Pakistan 2019, a revival of it is actually talked about. Hence, we are expecting a question on that area. Friends, organized crime and linkage terrorism. If you observe, in the pre previously, only 2018 a question has come, but the question is about how drug trafficking linkages are used by terrorists. So this year we are expecting a broad question, how organized crime is helping terrorism or terrorist organizations in India in terms of their funding or their movement etc. So the question can actually come this year on this topic. 
Now, security force, as I told you, NIA, National Investigation Agency, is in the news for several reasons. Hence, there may be question on that area. Friends, UPSC questions are unpredictable. Definitely, we cannot predict all the questions that are going to come in UPSC because that is the style of UPSC examination. However, we have to revise some important topics of the syllabus. We have to expect some questions and focus on them more because we do not have time to revise all the topics. If you expect some topics and spend more time on that, in the examination, if such questions come, you can write better. You can write two or three points more, which will add one or two mocks more. And every mock in UPSC really matters in the mains examination. As you know, for every mock, the ranks change drastically. Now friends, after analyzing the questions last year, as you can see, I haven't really read out all the questions, but I have shown in each area of the internal security, what kind of questions have come broadly, how many questions have come, and based on that, what we are expecting for this year. Now, let us go and see what are the nine questions, nine questions in the sense, nine topics actually, nine topics uh, in which we are expecting questions. Friends, the first question, friends, I have to tell you one thing. In this video, I may not be able to explain all the questions, I mean answers for all the questions. Hence what we are doing is, we are attaching a PDF file, also providing a link where you can find answers to all these questions. For a few questions, I will briefly tell you the way you have to write the answer. However, a detailed answer will not be discussed in this video. For example, one area from which we are expecting question is, as I told you, Maritime Security of India, particularly in the Indo-Pacific region because the Indo-Pacific has been in the news and the question came on maritime security a long time ago. India is focusing very much on the continental strategies, particularly along the Pakistan-China border. However, Indo-Pacific region is going to the future of India. If we, have, if we have to secure the secure the trade or build relations, or if we have to become you know global power, or in the extended neighborhood, if India has to prove itself and able to be a reliable partner for extended neighbors, then we have to be very strong in the Indo-Pacific region maritime security. Hence, the question is also framed in the same light. The question is, India is focusing on the continental strategies. However, time has come when we have to focus on the maritime region and India requires robust maritime strategy and what are the various security concerns related to it. So, for any question, friend, I would divide any question, you have to write the answer in three broad parts. Number one, any question on security, you discuss what are the possible challenges. For example, cyber security question, write quickly about what are the problem challenges in the cyber security uh, area or what are the problem challenges in money laundering. Here it is maritime security, you write what are the possible challenges India may face in the maritime zone. And then write various government steps. What are the steps taken by government? It can be policy, strategy, any you know, international meetings India attended, it came up in, within certain act or any bill that is being passed in the parliament. You discussed about all those things. You have discussed about all those things. And finally, you have to suggest some measures. So you have to show that you know what government is doing and also you have to write your opinion, what suggestions will you provide. Of course, you have to address the demand of the question, but broadly you have to cover these three areas. And you should tell the evaluator that you know what are the possible challenges. So for example, in the maritime security also, you write, for example, piracy is a major problem in the maritime, in, in, in the ocean piracy, for example, along the Somalia, Gulf of Aden, Horn of Africa, a major challenge is piracy. The question has come, high risk area is moving from 65 degrees longitude to 70 degrees. The question has come already. So discuss about the piracy concerns and the maritime terrorism. How terrorists these days in the hybrid warfare can attack easily India only along the coastline because India has got a really long coastline. Even 2008 Mumbai attack also, they came from the west coast of India to enter into Mumbai. And then my immigration, particularly from uh, Bangladesh and Sri Lanka, illegal immigration, not only to India, from Myanmar also, not only to India, but they are using India as a transit route to go to other countries, other countries also. That is because along our coast and as of now, the maritime security is not completely available throughout the coast. There are some gaps. Also, the, the um, uh, coastal, coastal security is essential because organized criminals, organized crime, it can be drug trafficking, psychostrophic substances, traffic of human beings or arms. You know, these things can easily uh, use the coastline because the security along the coastline is less compared to the land border in India. 
Disaster, though it, it does not narrowly fall down in internet security, we can still write one or two points on disaster by mentioning that a disaster like tsunami, cyclone or coastal flooding is also a major security threat to India. Now, as I told you, first you have to address the possible problems in that area, then what is the strategy for India? India has, you know, though there are several things India has done, we can address three or four fundamental things and three or four current affairs things. That's all you can do in the examination. You cannot write more than five, six points on a given area. For example, Indian Maritime Security Strategy 2015 by Indian Navy in order to, you know, intensify the patrolling or surveillance along the coastline of India so that India can become a preferred security partner is one thing you can write. And even the coastal security scheme, particularly for the coastal states, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, you know, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, the coastal states where the state government police, local police, join hands with the Indian Navy for patrolling and surveillance for a strong maritime security. And five-point agenda, for example, Indian presidential statement recommended to the Prime Minister of India, given to United Nations Security Council, in the five-point agenda also, internal security is there. Friends, in the five points, one point is about security, maritime security. Other points, of course, for example, one is the establishing strong trade links, and you know, you know, reducing the trade barriers, maritime trade barriers in the environment, the coastal resources, coastal ecosystem, the social be conserved, preserved. So along with these things, even solving the disputes, maritime disputes, means by following UNCLOS, along with these things, even security is a major, major uh, area in the five-point agenda presented by India to UNSC, and UNSC is adopting that. But however, all the countries have to start adopting that. Then you know the national NC3A, the National Command Control Communication and Intelligence Network is called NC3A. NC3A. Why? It is for best coastal surveillance where it is also called as gapless coastal surveillance without any gap providing the proper coastal surveillance. And then operations like Milan. Previously it used to happen in Andaman Ecobar by the Andaman Naval Command but recently it shifted to Vishakhapatnam by means organized by the Eastern Naval Command and it is in the news. This year it happened. So it's in the news. That's another reason why we're expecting a question on the maritime security. Then, you know, humanitarian assistance and disaster relief, what India has recently provided to Seychelles recently. India has provided Seychelles. So HIDR is also important. And, you know, this is ASEAN Defense Ministers, ASEAN, Association of Southeast Asian Nation, ASEAN Defense Ministers Meeting Plus. See, international cooperation is very important in the maritime. India has signed several agreements, many countries. However, ADMM Plus is a very interesting framework that is comprehensively covering the maritime security along with economy also economic angle also friends as i told you first we will be addressing the possible problems then we have to discuss few things that india has done already in this area and finally suggestions suggestions play a very important role in order to gain more marks in upsc mains you cannot just buy heart what government is doing you cannot just buy heart the books and write you have to mention your idea suggestions that you think India has to do in order to strengthen the maritime security. For example, develop we have developed blue water naval cap. Blue water means, uh, you know, far away from the uh, coastline, high sea. In the high seas, what is our capability? That actually shows our naval capabilities. We have developed those capabilities. And maritime choke points. So choke points in the sense, for example, Strait of Molokka is a choke, uh, is a choke point. Strait of Molokka. And Strait of Hormuz. Strait of Hormuz choke point. Even Baba al Mandeb, Baba al Mandeb. Means we have to... Uh, ensure security along those points where other countries, enemy countries can easily choke those points and stop our maritime trade. So we have to ensure security in those areas. So we can talk about that, uh, what India is doing and what India shall do in that. And even maritime security infrastructure, the infrastructure along the coastline is very important by, by you know, both by the state government and the central government. And then UNCLOS have to be ratified in order to address the disputes because if there is maritime dispute, it leads to maritime security challenges. And we have to implement the five point. Friends, remaining questions I may not spend this much time, but I will quickly go through the possible questions that we are expecting this year in GS3 internal security. As I told you, the D4, this actually DRD was D4 counter drone system was deployed not only during Independence Day but also Republic Day because Drone attacks is asymmetric warfare. Easily an enemy country or enemy organization can drop an explosive in the crowd where you know high profile people are you know sitting in a meeting. Even drones can be used to uh, destroy the structures by explosives. So 
counter drone system is very important and DRDO has implemented it, counter drone system during interval day in order to counter the threats from you know any organization, terrorist organization. So hence there is a question in this area. So the question expert thing is instead analyze potential aids for security risks and challenges of the drones and what are the measures India has taken and what we have to still take. The questions are almost the same way. Also this topic is in the Sunset News continuously and the question came long time ago, aids for security and recently aids for security has gained prominence throughout the world. Hence, we are expecting a question from this area, friends. Same structure of the answer. First, we will explain the risks, various challenges provided by aid space in the as far as security is concerned. For example, physical attack can be done. You know, recently in the Jammu air base, which is a highly secure air base, but a drone attack happened, though it is a less intense explosive, it was attacked. Jammu air base was attacked. Also, kinetic attacks in the sense uh, they can carry some guns or some explosives and drop drop them where more people are there, where crowd is there, or on a structure which is important for India from security point of view. Even cyber security also can be threatened by the drones. For example, they can act like a Wi-Fi and they can steal the data from that area, from the networks easily. And friends, drones are used for surveillance by the enemy countries along the border to understand what defense equipment and what defense structure we have or maybe the placement of soldiers along the border. Reconnaissance and surveillance is possible. Privacy can be you know, invaded through the drones and smuggling. For example, drones are used to smuggle arms, ammunition, guns. I mean, even the Naxal sometimes, these days news are there, Naxals are getting some of the guns from other countries through drones only along the border. And as I told you, then you have tried the measures taken by government. We have mentioned them very clearly in the description. Please see the description where we are given answers for all these questions. So also what measures still required, though government is taking some good measures, still more are required. Explain those in the suggestions uh, side heading. Then friends, as I told you, national investigation agency in the news. So among various agencies, forces, that are guarding the security of India. NIA is very important from the point of view of countering terrorism. And as I told you, UPS's favorite area is terrorism. They asked many questions on terrorism. And as this year, NIA is there in the news. Amendments NIA is also asked. As you know, friends, see, generally, the seventh schedule of the Constitution of India clearly mentions that state law and order, public order, and police, and police come under the state list. Come under the state list. Whereas national security comes under the union list. National security comes under the union list. So there is a clash, you know, for example, National Investigation Agency requires a strong coordination with the local police. But without consulting the local police, sometimes they may have to do some operations for which state governments are not ready actually. Even Chhattisgarh government has filed a case in Supreme Court against NIA. So NIA amendments have been suggested. However, NIA should be strengthened. In my point of view, NIA should be strengthened, should be given more teeth because they are very well trained to counter terrorism and terrorism is going to be the major inter-security challenge in the next years to come because terrorists are becoming very strong financially, technologically, strategically by getting support from the state actors. So hence, uh, what is, the question was about role and, what is the role and mandate of NIA, challenges faced by NIA, suggest ways to strengthen uh, their investigation ability. So how, how can they um, act better in countering terrorism? So a question can come as, as I told you. One reason for we to expect this question is it is in the news. Second reason is terrorism is a favorite area of UPSC. As I told you, answers are attached. Are attached. You can see the answers. And friends, as you know, NIA specifically after the 2008 Mumbai attack, in order to counter such kind of attacks, NIA was formed. But later on, it has been given other duties also. For example, high-profile counterfeit currency, cross-border counterfeit currency uh, movement. Uh, to stop this movement, the work is also given to NIA. Means later on, NIA's the, the area of NIA, the area of the work of NIA has been expanded with time. As security challenges are also uh, prominently increasing these years. Friends, for example, India and Pakistan relationship is, you know, going up and down in recent times. How can LOC trade be a hope? Friends, you know, many international experts, 
foreign affairs thinkers of India are suggesting that LOC trade, cross LOC, friends as you know, line of control, LOC, between India and Pakistan was established, you know, after that uh, Bangladesh Liberation War, after the war in 1972 in the Shimla, in Shimla agreement, LOC was accepted by both the countries. From that time, trade was encouraged actually because trade helps the people on both sides of the border economically, socially, they will get employment also. And you know, almost from last 10 years, almost 7,500 crores worth of trade happened between the borders. So that is the potential scope of the LOC trade. However, the point here is, LOC trade is good for both the countries, but India's fear is that this trade has been misused by state and non-state actors to smuggle the arms, you know, ammunition or, you know, drugs, psychosocial substances, terrorists are able to move using the LOC trade, etc. So you have to address this. Means at one side you have to tell the importance of LOC trade for both the countries. Because if LOC trade is stopped, no, LOC trade is stopped, no, then the trade happens to other countries. If anything has to go from India to Pakistan, it will go through Nepal, go through other country, go through Afghanistan. So because of that, you know, the both sides of the, the people on both sides will not get a lot of benefits. So you have to address those concerns along with security challenges provided by this uh, LOC trade. So this topic is there in sunset as well as the news news and as I told you the cross-border trade question came long time back we're expecting question in this area cyber war friends cyber war questions are coming regularly and uh, every year in the news there is some new malware threats uh, for example uh, you know Russia uh, recently hacking uh, uh, US Treasury networks Russia was not directly mentioned but the malware that attacked the American US uh, Treasury networks is pointed towards Russia. So every year, for example, before before that Pegasus was there, even before that uh, WannaCry was there. So every year there was some new malware that is throughout the news. Hence, uh, you know, in fact, cyber war is actually gaining strength because of not only artificial intelligence but also Internet of Things because of cloud computing, the big data, you know. So, latest technology is able to strengthen the, uh, strengthen the, not strengthen, is the, the latest technologies are able to make the cyber war more powerful. So, cyber attackers, those who are uh, hacking, are getting new tools in their hands to hack. Hence, the countries like India have to train their soldiers, I mean the cyber warriors with these tools, so that we can effectively stop cyber attacks. Hence, the question can come in this area also. Till now, only basics were asked on cyber war. And as things are changing year on year, deeper questions can come on the cyber war. So, you have to address both. What are the advantages of artificial intelligence? Artificial intelligence can be used for cyber security as well as it is a bane. By using artificial intelligence, the cyber attackers can actually become stronger to easily steal the data or make the networks dysfunctional. The next question expecting, as I told you friends, the first part of the UPSC syllabus in the security is development versus extremism. In this area, only one question came six years ago. So we are expecting a question on this one. So broadly, social, economic and political dynamics, how they influence extremism in these areas and how poverty, unemployment, lack of development, insecurity and absence of rule of law, all these things, how they are breeding the ground for extremism. So question in this line. So here you can write about how underdevelopment, for example, how corruption in some areas, misgovernance or lack of employment or lack of economic development, you know, politically the corruption, socially, economic lack of employment or lack of industrial development or lack of infrastructure, socially how discrimination, how these are leading to extremism and these are in detail, these are explained in detail in my 6 hours video on internal security also. So prepare on these lines because the question came only in 2015. So we expect a question on this one. Then friends, social media, social media. Again, technology. See, technology uh, tools are increasing these days. It is throwing up new challenges in the security. So government has to be innovative in order to face them. Social media, not only the normal media, electronic media, but also social media 
uh, is causing internal security challenges and as this is directly there in the UPSC syllabus, you will prepare on that and the recently certain amendments are uh, done, amendments are done by the Indian government for the social media sites, social media sites, Facebook, Twitter, the amendment was done. So you are prepared on those amendments and now what India has to do more in order to counter the threats coming through the social media. And the question was asked only six years ago, only once it's asked. So we are expecting one question this year for social media, how it causes internal security challenges. Then first agree about, generally I know that any scheme that is highly in the news, means hot news, means which is all over the newspapers and TV channels may not be really asked. For example, the questions I have given, mostly are discussed in ITSA. I mean, you have to go through ideas website friends and Sansad. Sansad. Means interesting important areas but not very well covered in the news. But Agnipath is a very interesting and important area but it's very well covered in the news. So you person may not ask. However, if it's asked, you should be able to write more points. That's why we are expecting this question. Agnipath scheme. How Agnipath scheme, though it is only four year tenure, after four years, those who want to continue, all 20% of them will be given a chance for continuance of the uh, service in all the three, three areas of defense. Defense. So what are the advantages, disadvantages, how does it help uh, India, Indian uh, security personnel's average years to come down, how can it can, how it can provide India uh, better people, stronger young people to face inter-security challenges along the border or otherwise also. So you have to discuss its features and also implications. So it is also discussed in the news all over and as well as in the description you can see the answer for this one. Friends, as I told you, the link between organized crime and terrorism is directly asked in the UPSC uh, notification syllabus. However, a, never a question came exactly asking the linkage between organized crime and terrorism. A question till now never came. So we are expecting a question from this area. So prepare how organized crime is helping terrorism in funding, in movement, in uh, supplying arms, ammunition or psychosocial substances, whatever. So, how organized crime is in the reinforcing terrorism and what is government doing presently and what more we have to do to, we have to break this unholy nexus. Prepare in these lines. Friends, tell you once again, those who have missed revised internal security can watch the 6-hour video which is given in the description. Also, those who want to see the answers for these 9 questions expecting in, in this year's UPSC mains can see in the description. Description has these both things. Thank you, friends. All the best. Do well. Write mock exams. Revise only important things as you have got less time. All the best.